to another episode of Financial QB TV. I'm Richard Reyes, Certified Financial Planner and the Financial Quarterback. I want to tell you something. This Monday, this coming Monday, October 17, 2011, is the day of reckoning if you made a Roth conversion in 2010 and are, and are now thinking about not going along with it. Once October 17 passes, if you converted an IRA, or part of an uh, IRA, that's tr a traditional IRA, into a Roth IRA in the year 2010, you will be now irrevocably logged into this conversion and the tax bill that comes along with it. Now, why would you want to undo this uh, the conversion? Well, for clients that made Roth conversions in 2010 and have lost substantial value, the decision to recharacterize or undo this conversion is maybe often a, a no-brainer. And let's say, for example, assuming you had $100,000 and you converted the traditional IRA $100,000 into a Roth IRA, and now because of the uh, market decline, the $100,000 is now worth $80,000. It might make sense to you to undo your conversion and return uh, to a traditional IRA instead. This will keep you from paying the tax on the $100,000 you originally converted. Now, in order to recharacterize or undo this Roth conversion, there is a couple of steps you must take. First, of course, you need to contact your Roth IRA custodian and tell them, hey, I want to change back to a traditional IRA. They will send you the paperwork you completed, and of course, that's done. The second step, though, is a little bit more tedious. After you undo the conversion, if you filed your 2010 tax return before the October 17th extension deadline, you must amend and file your original 2010 tax return in order to report the recharacterization um, to the IRS. Of course, if you have not yet filed your tax return uh, for 2010, uh, October 17th is your last day to do it. Um, now please make sure though that you have a qualified tax advisor um, or tax preparer to handle this since it does get a little tricky with the uh, either conversion or recharacterization of a Roth and, and, and how you input it into your tax return. Now if you decide uh, to keep your conversion well there's no need to do anything. All you have to do is pay the taxes, which of course are due, you get to spread it out over 2011 and 2012 if you made that election, and, uh, and you keep enjoying tax-free growth. Now, if you're on the fence, again, here are probably a couple of reasons you might consider of why um, you might want to undo your Roth conversion. Number one, I already told you. Let's say you had $100,000, you converted to a Roth IRA, it's now worth eighty. You might not want to pay the tax on the original $100,000 so you convert back to a traditional IRA. The first, the second one is, well, you owe the tax. When you make this Roth conversion, you owe the tax. You might not have the money to do it, even if you have to spread it over two years. It might be a consideration to undo the Roth conversion. And I actually saw, and number three is, I actually saw this a lot in 2010. I saw people that really had not a lot of benefit to do the Roth conversion, uh, but they did it anyways because, uh, of course, they did it before they came to see me, um, and they did it well because they said you can do it, um, but there really, at the end of the day, was not a lot of benefit, so you might want to consider undoing that conversion. Uh, but in any regards, you know, I just gave you three reasons. There might be some that are specific to you, and you please give me a call, and we can go over them either on the phone or we can get together before Monday if possible. Uh, but in any regards, remember that October 17th is the last day to change your mind. See you next time.